Okay, here we are down in uh, West Sussex, Paulborough. Um, about to undertake Free Walk 128, which is a Paulborough circular. And I'm hoping on this glorious day to do the long circular, which is around 16 and a half, 17 miles. So my longest walk of the year. Uh, it's now about 11. 30 so I'm anticipating a late finish tonight about 8 o'clock but uh, we've got plenty of time sunsets not till around 9 these days only a uh, what are we only just under a month to go to the short uh, longest day now that's come around quickly as you can see still using signals down here Anyway, this walk incorporates uh, the National Trust's Petworth House, so um, hope to get around their park as well. As I said, weather's very good and is expected to be so today. Gentle wind, apparently, of around nine knots coming from the north, though, so uh, that will be adding a pleasant chill to the 16 degrees that we're forecast. Camera's been uh, serviced. So hopefully, fingers crossed, things will uh, be back to normal now, but the whole purpose of today really is to field test it. So let's see what transpires. It's not many minutes uh, after leaving the railway station, but you're into very rural countryside straight away. Very pleasant. Plenty of bird song, chiff chaffs, robins, dunnocks, all bodes well. Might even hear a cuckoo today, who knows. Crossing over the railway line and looking back towards Paulborough Station. The downs in the distance. Looking back across the mill pond to Old Place Manor, uh, one of the farmsteads over there, built around 1450 apparently. So a considerable age. This is definitely cuckoo territory. If I don't hear one today, I should be gobsmacked. Though this text doesn't say as much, I'm assuming this is the onward journey. It just says go up a grassy slope between fields. Doesn't mention the kissing gate. Anyway, per Ardu ad Astra. Looking back towards Paulborough and its church with the downs in the distance there. And uh, across some very tall barley here, which has suddenly come into, um, into its own. It's up to about my waist height and it's already starting to get a bit of a brown hue to it. That's incredible bearing in mind the uh, winter we've just had. And this is clearly winter barley. Another shot of the downs in the distance. I'm stood beside the warning notice just about to cross the gallops. Skylarks present on my right. As you may be able to hear. There are the horses practicing over there on my right as I cross the field. Glorious uh, morning it is now. Get distant views of the downs once again. Chaffinch is singing in the background. Entering Hill Farm, and amazingly the uh, stile has now been replaced with a gate. 
I say amazingly because the text wasn't written that long ago. These uh, barn conversions are all well and good, but they are part of the reason, probably the main reason, why the swallow numbers are diminishing. Got nowhere to nest. Well, there we have it, a mile and a quarter away, apparently. So the zoom's working fine at the moment. That's Tote Monument. Sorry, not a mile and a quarter away, a kilometre and a quarter away. I do believe we pass that soon. Surrounding countryside's pretty tasty as well. Lovely yellow flower on this wall to my left. It's walking down the steep footpath from the uh, Minor Road and Tote Monument, which is um, a memorial to a horse rider who died in 1823 apparently. Tote Monument from another angle. Now we start to hear the jets at Gatwick, unfortunately. Well, nay cast a clout till the May is out, and it looks like it is. But uh, there's still a chill breeze, so we've got until next week, I guess before you get rid of your winter clothes. Text doesn't refer to this gate and style either, which I feel it ought to. Although uh, we haven't walked 350 metres yet and we're not at a path T junction, but nonetheless, text probably should refer to this gate. Okay, here's the path T junction where we turn left and follow for 700 metres. Little collection here of bluebells, wooden enemy, I think that is, and uh, yeah, wood forget me nots, not forget me nots. What's that? Um, oh dear, can't remember. Terrible. Still following this footpath for 700 metres, just mentioned that uh, it could become quite overgrown in places in the uh, height of summer. Very delightful uh, meadow side walking though. Classic territory for uh, yellow hammers and they're being heard in abundance. As there. We're now turning left at Pickhurst Farm, not Pickford's Farm as referred to in the text, and about to follow the uh, way south path. So as you can see, Pickhurst, not Pickford. A pleasant view awaits us as we walk on down the lane towards Sheepwash Farm, interestingly named. Here we are at the entrance to Sheepwash Farm, where we take a right. There's a lovely meadow full of king cup. I believe it is. Okay, the uh, path diverges here. Uh, I'm sitting in front of the gate here to Lock Cottage, referred to in the text. 
Now because we had heavy rainfall yesterday and the reason why I'm not doing the other Paulborough walks, uh, the ones through the water meadows, is because I suspect that it will be quite damp underfoot. So today I'm going to do the extra 100 metres and take the right hand of the two options here. This bridge was restored in 1976 apparently by the Way and Aaron Restoration Society or something like that. And this is the abandoned Aaron navigation. So that's what a canal bed looks like. And from another angle. Crossing the River Aaron, viewed from the uh, footbridge. Wonderful scenery, very pleasant. No jet noise at the moment either. As you can see from the mud on that tree there, it wasn't that long ago since this uh, river was in full storm flow. Quickly passes by and it's forgotten, eh? Okay, in this woodland now, just past Pallinham Key Farm, taking a left uphill. The view from a point just past Lane End Cottage. Wonderful. Shame about the jet noise now. Turning right just prior to the stop of this state. Fine views on the left referred to on uh, in a text as we cross this meadow. And again from the corner of the field by the footpath post. Delightful day it is now. Shame about the jet noise though. Yeah, just been having problems with my video. So it's not right, unfortunately. It's going to have to go back in again. A, uh, just outside Springs Farm, referred to in the text. Got a couple of options here. The text refers to taking the track, which I will do. But there's also a minor path alongside, which might be uh, possible to follow to the same point. Yeah, another lovely crop of uh, bluebells. with a small pond here behind me. Still no cuckoos though. What a lovely glade that is. About quarter past one now for the timekeepers amongst you. And from another angle. Although you're probably not getting the uh, bluebells, you're getting that leaf. Interesting, the woodland on my left has been recently cleared. Could be hornbeam. But uh, the bluebells still persist. Onward journeys ahead along this track 
open field to my right. Out of the wood, views on my left. Pretty impressive. And further views of the downs from the edge of the wood. Coming out into the small clearing, following the uh, broad track ahead. These are Bogner common sand pits. I bet they're full of sand martins, those banks, if we could see them. Although the uh, workings of the workers might put them off. The sun's disappeared for a while now, worryingly. Past the hairpin on the left referred to in the text, now following this track up through the woodland. This is probably the muddiest section I've encountered today following yesterday's rains. Very pleasant nonetheless though, as the sun's back out and the uh, ferns are starting to appear. Lovely. Just passing the oblique path crossing referred to in the text and as you can see still pretty muddy but uh, that's a small price for the other benefits, bluebells, delightful aroma in here, peace and quiet, bird song, and the jets are not too uh, evident at the moment. Wonderful. A couple of beetles there that I can't focus properly on. So clearly this uh, Zoom isn't working properly. They're okay at that distance, but not right close up. Anyway, that tells us enough. As you can see, we're just leaving uh, what's known as Flexham Park. And once again, we're following the Serpent Trail. Onward journeys left here, up towards the road, I do believe. Just in Plast 07. Seems I haven't come far from the east end then. Okay, 75 metres past Montpellier farmhouse. And it's no coincidence that the muddiest sections of the walk today are bridleways. Wonderful, apart from the jet noise. Still following the Serpent Trail. For 300 metres. Views of the Downs again on my left. Accompanied by the omnipresent Chiff Chaff. Just leaving the uh, Brinksole Heath Woodland, part of the Leakham Field Estates. And somebody is very kindly and I don't say that easily because it's uh, tree life but somebody's created this great vista which the uh, author of the walk wouldn't have got because it's only recently occurred look at that it's 
clearly why they've cut these uh, few bushes down which are still lying in the hedge to my left by the way there what I'm walking down now is a classic greenway many thousands of feet of tramps down here in the past I bet delightful style referred to in the text has been replaced by one of these silly gates that you can't squeeze through with a rucksack on your back. We're heading up towards that clump of trees for hopefully a good view of Petworth which is around a, uh, a kilometre away now. Interesting just the other side of the clump of trees there's a little grave here to what I presume is uh, dog. Hmm. Mystery. So ahead of us views of uh, the park at Petworth. The church and Petworth house. Now it's not jet noise that disturbs me, but a helicopter. Unbelievable. As the winds pick up. Further views of the downs on my left in the distance there. About 90 metres up here. And there's the uh, field gate referred to in the text. Once again, the style's been replaced by a kissing gate. There's Petworth Church and House in the distance. Views down across uh, what is known as Shimmins Valley. And I'll be following the uh, 5B option directly to Petworth House. A lovely buttercup clad brook from the footbridge uh, referred to in the text. Masses of flies down there, nothing eating them because there's no um, swallows or martins to do so. Certainly not in the numbers that there should be. It's going to be a bad summer for flies this year I reckon. Look at that, lovely. Buttercup meadow. Okay, just on the fringes of Petworth. And uh, as it's getting on, it's half past two already, I'm going to take my lunch here. There's a couple of benches just on the other side of the valley with a rather pleasant view. So, uh, yeah, makes sense to take my lunch here. This bench isn't dedicated to anybody, but no worries. Just in front of this uh, interesting looking gazebo here. And with a chaffinch accompaniment. Sounds good. Okay, about 3.10, lunch has been had. Just passing the ruins of the old church referred to in the text on the left here. St Mary's Petworth from another angle. So here we go, cow yard tunnel entrance into Petworth Park, thus avoiding any admission fee. And there is said tunnel entrance.
Yeah, there is a deer park here, so uh, hence the warning. This Petworth house, bathing in the sunshine, and in that respect, well designed by uh, Capability Brown, I think it comes to mind. And as he just did the gardens. Serpentine Upper Pond, I do believe this is, on my left with the backdrop of the downs in the distance. Magnificent, magnificent setting. House being built in the 1690s apparently. Views ahead towards the lower pond and uh, hordes of people. I guess you would find that on a bank holiday weekend. Looks like some deer over there on that bank. Mighty Oak next to Lower Pond and at this juncture you have a number of options the gentle climb on the left up towards that uh, folly in the distance there I think that's known as the monument Or a shortcut here on the left. There's that monument from another angle. Clear evidence of the deer line there on the trees. And look at the numbers. They're everywhere. They're the uh, speckled roe deer, aren't they? Loads of them. Some have been a nap. The mansion house from uh, the far side of Upper Pond. Some noisy geese in there. Probably spotted me, that's what it is. Yeah, that's interesting. It's not a golden eye, is it? Oh, it's gone. Did have golden eye, but uh, I don't think it is a golden eye.
There it is. Nope, keeps going. And from another angle. Well, it may be a parasite, but uh, I think that's rhododendron. I might be wrong though, because the National Trust don't usually uh, let it stay on. Yeah. Anyway, tiny little bit of it out there on that little islet. Adds a nice splash of colour. Interesting, it looks like there's been some filming going on down here. Probably some period drama. One final shot of the grounds before I uh, depart. And one of the house. By all accounts, one of the National Trust's top properties and you can see why. Turning left into Barton's Lane, come across this interesting inscription. Just prior to the uh, turnstile, there's this uh, commemorative inscription to remember the Silver Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth. Well here's the second of the turnstiles referred to, just before the A283 there. But I must admit I didn't pass the first one, so that must have disappeared since the text was written. Okay, as you can see, uh, and as referred to in the text, we have a choice of routes here. I've decided to take the upper one, as uh, there's a cacophony of birdsong around me. Chiff chaffs, blackbirds, goldfinches, magnificent. What a glorious May afternoon this is. And as I say, much as I dislike it, doesn't that rhododendron, which I think it is, add some colour? Magnificent valley view just prior to reaching the style referred to in the text which incidentally is now a kissing gate like many of them are there you go seems like a lot of work on the styles and gates has been occurring since the text was written that's great if you can squeeze through them that is which uh, nine times out of ten i don't seem to be able to so there's the wood where I need to make a decision whether to go through it uh, illegally or to stick to the public right of way round the edge of it. Great shot of the South Downs in the distance. Pretty much got the whole ridge line there. Look at that, eh? It's a fair old walk. So that's the illegal footpath, uh, which clearly 
is well worn and appears to be a path but isn't. Nice little bluebell wood. But again, since the text was written, the hedge has been tidied up and the stile has been replaced with a gate. So it's fairly obvious uh, which way you need to go officially. Okay, as uh, referred to in the text, the path indicates, or the footpath marker, marker indicates you should go straight ahead and there is a very minor trickle evident through the field or what the farmer seems to prefer you to do is go round the edge of the field because uh, they've left a greenway round the edge. I think I'll go traipsing through the middle. Walking straight across the field as I did and as is uh, the legitimate right of way brings you bang opposite this um, stile. Okay, this is the dilapidated stile referred to in the text. Having just uh, come past that wonderful cottage, Haslingbourne, um, with its electronic gates and CCTV, I can well understand why she's, I've just spoken to the owner, I can well understand why she's got all that gadgetry. It is a delightful place, as I told her. Stood under a solitary oak here, still heading south, having just passed two cottages on my left towards the South Downs. Walking east along the farm track towards the isolated house referred to in the text and uh, there's like some extensive works going on here. Refurbishment. and some uh, crop being protected. Well I must say there's certainly been a lot of uh, style replacement on this walk. New gate here as well. Maybe it's a time of year when farmers get funding for this sort of thing, I don't know. But that one I was actually able to get through with my rucksack on my back. First one today. So well done. Whoever put that one in with uh, thought for us walkers. So, it's off to work we go. Both of those songs are a chaffinch. For a moment I thought it might be a bullfinch, the elusive bullfinch, but no such luck. Great downland views again on my right, on the track to High Hose. Take a left here, heading east, down towards those farm buildings. What a lovely afternoon it is, here in the uh, South Downs National Park which is of course where we are. Passing the attractive pond on my left, per the text. So I guess this is what it might have been like had I gone south of Pulborough and done the uh, walk through the brooks. But uh, that walk's waiting for a drier period of the year. So I've still got a couple of Pulborough walks to do, luckily, because it's a delightful area, no doubt. Hesworth Farm, referred to in the text, has now been relabeled Hesworth Barn. The farm's actually further down the lane there. Our onward journey's up here, turning left. Now in uh, the woodland of Hesworth Common. And isn't this wonderful? Some people may say that the um, house at Petworth is the highlight of this walk. That's not my cup of tea, so I disagree. Attractive it may be, but uh, I still prefer these natural scenes. Wonderful. Now 
Now this is proper ancient forest. Ferns being replaced, the old dead ferns being replaced by fresh green new ones. Lots of birch, oak. So I still, I still don't understand uh, why Broxbourne was so devoid of life. Must be the soil type. But having said that, you do get bluebells in woods nearby to Broxbourne. So, uh, don't know. Okay, the view from the bench referred to in the text. It's about um, 60 to 70 metres here. I'm not at the trig point yet, but I know that that's 69 metres. Well worn here, reflecting the number of people that traipse around, but today, believe it or not, a bank holiday weekend, no one. They're all over at Petworth, and that suits me. Lovely. Following the sandy path through heathland, heather, and young oaks, evident there, English oaks at that, up towards the trig point hopefully. Okay here we are, the trig point view from. Beautiful, isn't it? Fantastic. Especially on a day like today. Better than watching the European Cup. Has that started yet? No. <laughs> So, 69 metres, apparently. Seems higher than that to me, but there you go, that's what the map says. Yeah, just uh, in front of the deep gully referred to in the text. You can hear the A283 already. Clearly those people up by the trig point have got there because there's a car park nearby, unlike me. So oh, just leaving Hesworth Common, uh, the information panel has been destroyed but uh, just stood in a little car park, about to do a right onto this B road here. Yeah, just walking past the Scout and Guide Group hut, referred to in the text. Good location for it. Yet another St Mary the Virgin, this one being in Fittleworth, dating from the 13th century, with a 19th century nave, apparently. Well there you go, just as we've been uh, commemorating Elizabeth's Diamond Jubilee, there's a clock in the tower commemorating the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria. Incredible. And there she blows. Correct time and all. What a wonderful church this is. They all seem to have such lovely settings. Appropriate for gardens of rest, I guess. Take the left fork here, in front of Orchard House, which is uh, still the Serpent Way, or Trail. Now entering Fittleworth Common. Wonderful Robin song there. Another very pleasant wood of a variety of tree that I keep failing to recognise. It's got this long leaf, fairly shiny bark. I don't know what it is. And the tree is uh, very tall. I 
And I saw it down near Hazelmere the other week as well. Interesting uh, yellow flower there. Don't think that's native. Probably come out of the gardens behind me. Get a close up on the leaf. Yeah. Plenty of rhododendron in here as well. The interesting thing about today's walk is you get little clusters of bluebells. They're not everywhere, seem quite choosy about their soil, but uh, when they crop up, lovely to see. Like here, one section none, and on the right, loads of them. Our good friend at Chiff Jeff. Wonderful. The village green and St Mary the Virgin again at Stopham this time. So here we are, Stopham Bridge, built in 1423. And in the distance, the White Heart, which looks like it's having some works done. Soon find out. And this is the River Arran that we're crossing. That's still in business. Pleasant enough garden, riverside setting. It's the uh, recommended tea stop. It's quarter seven now, by the way information panel here about the uh, bridge and other things alongside Aran Navigation and Way and Aran Canal. Further great views there through the fencing on my right of the Downs as we uh, follow a sandy footpath for a final section of woodland walking. Wonderful, fantastic views, eh? In the uh, quiet of the evening now. Wonderful, delightful. Every adjective you can think of. And there's the railway line down there as well. So, uh, unfortunately, not far to go now. One of those walks you don't want to end, really. Park mound up there, a wooded uh, defensive Norman fort. There's the old pillbox referred to in the text. What a fantastic vista that had, eh? As we uh, commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Dan Busters last week. There you've got Paulborough Church ahead. And there's an old copy of the Paulborough Chronicle attached to this one. 1940. Fantastic. Look at that. Explaining why the gun emplacement was put up here. Brilliant. Very Dad's Army. and the view over to its left. Brilliant. Looking back up at the pillbox from the lane, it's got a very clever position. Setting sun uh, protects it. It's not doing my camera any good either, so uh, let's get away from that. So it's got to that time of the evening when the rabbits are out.
Okay, so here we are, half past seven, almost on the dot. So eight hours exactly since I left here. Uh, just under, well, around 16 miles I've done today, I guess, because I didn't do all of the park. So um, that was a great walk. Very, very nice. This area is um, fast becoming one of my favourites. Mixes well with a weald, uh, lots of woodland around here and of course you've got the uh, variety if you need it with the coast not far away. Uh, plenty of variety on today's walk with the house thrown in as well. Um, just didn't want that walk to end really. As I say 16 miles later, not really that tired, just like I wasn't after Broxbourne. Took it at a leisurely pace. No rushing. Footpaths are very good, soft on the knees in most cases. Hardly, well, a bit of road walking but not too much. So all in all, fantastic walk. Great weather as well. So can't complain. Let's get back and watch the highlights of the uh, Champions League final now. And hopefully Dortmund will win. So, free walk, one to eight, finished as is my battery. Only got two minutes left. Something wrong there as well. Definitely going to have to go back in for uh, attention. <laughs> 